badges do you have? I don't know. The layup badge, you would have had to yeah, work yeah, on a little bit yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, beautiful beautiful cut. Yeah. Archie turns it into two. 14 now for the junior. This is a very difficult league to win on the road. Any league is difficult to win on the road, but consider that there's altitude at many of the sites, including here, seven, above 7,000 feet. Uh, the pit in Albuquerque is a great, great home court advantage. It has always been one. I mean, BYU and the Marriott Center has 23,000 in change, chanting your name. It's usually a pretty good home court advantage. Now will Lele inside having a great second half. Will Lele with 18 points, 15 of them after the break. And Air Force Doug on the verge of moving to 13 and 1. We've seen them in person now. How good is this team in your estimation? I think they're a very good team. Remember, we're seeing them at home. And we're seeing them against a young BYU team that maybe not as good as its 8-3 record based upon the teams that they have played. But still, uh, this is a team that is very, very difficult to prepare and play against. And when they shoot the ball as well as they have tonight, uh, they're in that group from 20 to 40 in the country. I think they're well within that group. I mean, you look at the, the teams ranked 21, 22, 23, uh, and the teams garnering votes as, as they start to gain votes. Uh, they're right there. Delic, what a job he has done. The best start in school history. The Falcons now 13-1 as they take this one 75-59. And as we discussed the home court advantage weekend, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Air Force. What a home court advantage here at Kuhn Arena. What is it now? 34 out of 35. The only loss to Andrew Bogut here last year. Tremendous. It Defensively, Pete Carrell bringing Kit Mueller out, forcing Alonzo Mourning away from the goal. Georgetown in the man defense. Eastwick now will take a top of the key. Turner a little more aggressive on him. Pete Carrell has always liked the back for a cut. We're seeing Princeton play as flash already. Here's Mueller first time, takes it in and hits the hook shot. Nice job by Kit Mueller. Led the Ivy League with a 70% field goal shooting. Those kind of shots. This was Villanova. Underneath. Mueller missed the layup that time as he had lost morning. Lapin, though, good hustle. Got the bucket. And he quick shoots that ball before morning can react with his hands. Matt Lapin, his first two, and Georgetown takes a timeout. What a start for the Princeton Tigers. Amazing start. They're just executing, and they're right in their game plan. Very unusual sighted to be holding their own on the boards against Georgetown. Another shocking stat. Great shooting by both sides. Princeton the advantage on the scoreboard right now. Princeton is literally starting their offense at midcourt, just spreading the Hoyas who are in a man-to-man -man defense. This Gravis, bounce pass left, which... Kicks it back out to Scrape. There's still plenty of time on the shot clock. Lappin hits three. Oh my. Lappin. Lappin throws it. That was on a real... Come for that last time. I'm watching four black jerseys running down the other way. So, clearly, Pete Carrill talked about that to minimize the Georgetown fast break. Back door again. It's open. Field day for Lappin. Nine points for Matt Lappin, who averages five a game in the Ivy League. Head and shoulders above the Princeton front line. Mueller gets it across. Lappin. Augustine had a thought, but it was a brief thought. Here's Mueller. Some room. Got two and a foul. I mean, he's got that move down. Listen to the crowd get into this thing. They're back in the time right now and that was up against Alonzo Mourning the nation shot clock leader nine of the 13 field goals layups hit Mueller is hit Mueller two on one break however Picked Princeton up. has a chance for the final shot of the half well, is Dwayne Bryant pursuing that time defensively for Georgetown Back to a cut, Scrabus got the layup. Oh, what a pretty switch to the left by Scrabus on the back door cut. 
Jerry Doyle back in playing with three personal fouls. Jaron Jackson awaits him. This has been a key move by Pete Carrell, bringing out Kip Mueller. He's Princeton center, but he's able to handle the ball well. He doesn't get a lot of pressure when he's way out from the basket, although morning creeping out as the game goes along. With Doyle coming around, and he'll take the shot clock down again. Back door, Doyle got two! That's that spread offense once again, and Pete Carrell will get cutters coming from all different angles. That time, Doyle from the top. Reason a lot of this ball game, that entry pass has been a difficult one for Georgetown to get in there. Morning's got a lot of his production with offensive rebounds. Man to man now by Georgetown. Chris will try to get the backdoor cuts. Left which Mueller coming to his familiar spot, top of the key. Looking for a pass or a good cut, left which. And the thing about Princeton that time, I'm watching them and like five different guys take back for cuts and finally one opens up. So they're all schooled to just keep making that fake to the ball and go to the hoop. Scrabus and Leftwich combined to break the 10 second line. Mueller got two. Good look by Lappin to find Mueller going to the goal. And again, Princeton doing a great job getting back defensively outs remaining. They call two early. Georgetown with one, and the possession arrow favors Princeton. So if Princeton gets in a jam, now's the time to use up the timeout. Man to man pressure by the Hoyas. Leftwich pulls it back out. Mueller. Stravis goes in the back door cut. Warning off him now, saying, hey, Time to just get back into the paint area. Burned it up in the layups. That's right. Mueller kicks it out. Eight on the shot clock. Back to Mueller. Cut to Doyle. Got it. Great dish off by Mueller. Doyle with the big finish off another back door. Smith. Top of the key to Winston. Tips. And Scrave is hacking right there. Got it on the fourth tip to himself. One on one, it was on the floor. Yeah, good call, Ron. So Morning needs to make the first. And with 23 seconds left, depending on what happens here, stage is set for Princeton to hold for the last one and take a three and go for the win. Depending on what Morning can do from the line. Oh, he's been tough. He's been huge at the line. Five in a row down the stretch. With not a lot of people cheering for. Him. That out and his concentration efforts are great down the end. Biggest free throws of his young life. <laughs> Missed it. Rebound. Scravis. Princeton the ball down one. Here they come. They may use a timeout here. They've got two left and they do. What a ball game. That NCAA tournament back that was just up there. May not be valid about a minute from now. 15 seconds to go. Georgetown by one. 50 to boxing out and rebounding. And Princeton's got to take good care of the basketball and be aggressive with it. All right, here we go. 15 seconds. Georgetown by one. 50 to 49. Lappin, Leftwich, Doyle, Scravis. And Mueller. Georgetown man to man. They give it to Scravis. Bobby Winston on him. He gets a screen from Mueller. Comes out fire. Good by Morning. Loose on the floor. Jefferson can't save floor. it. Out of bounds. On the floor with a second One to go. One second on the clock. And Princeton's got a final prayer. Oh, Morning has come up huge at the end of this ball game from the foul line. And with that defensive play, it's enough time for Princeton, though, to get it in and get a shot off. The sixth block. Gonna try to get it to Scravis. Lappin. Mueller fires. No, the Hoyas escape. And I mean escape. And advance to the second round in the Eastern Regional. Princeton Tigers putting on just a fantastic show here tonight. 
They were a 20-point-plus underdog coming in here, but Pete Carrill's club just played their hearts out. They believed they could do it. They came out, got the early lead, and just executed this whole ball game, controlled the pace, and Princeton's got to be proud of their efforts. Towards down had themselves some scare. Princeton may have lost this game on the scoreboard, but that's the only place they lost it. 50 to 49, the final score.